So the first mission, if you haven't already done it like me, is to take the number plate off. Sometimes they've got screws in. This has had screws in several places over the years. Sometimes they're stuck on. But either way, get them off and you'll reveal two 13mm bolts. In an ideal world, what's going to happen now is it's going to slide forward off two brackets that are close to the wheel arches. We'll see how well that goes. You know, I said there was alternate methods of getting these out. Well, for whatever reason, I may have to use one of the alternates on this. And that is, they slid onto a bracket and the bracket is plastic. You can remove the bracket. You should not have to. Um, I'll show you again when it's out, how all this works, but there's a plastic dowel but basically keep some little claws expanded. If you pull that out, then the bracket comes out. I think somebody's been here before me and tried to knock them through rather than pull them out, which is the wrong way. Oh. There we go. Oh. If I remove the bumper, I'll be able to show you what I was doing. So this side came off in the way it was intended. You see what we've got is this oval plastic bracket and our bumper just hooks over top and bottom of this curved edge. And the plastic bracket is held in by clipping into this metal bracket and it's got some plastic dowels. One of the plastic dowels on this side fell out, literally fell out while I was working on it. I've got that to replace. If we look inside the bumper, you can see the two grooves here that slide onto the top and bottom of that bracket. And there really is no reason that they shouldn't slide off. One of the reasons that they don't is that pin in the middle, the dowel that's holding that other part, has been pushed in a long way and starts to engage with this hole here. Here on the other side, whoops, you can see the bracket is still attached. And those dowels messed up. I mean, somebody's been there before. And I think they just pushed too far in. So this isn't able to slide back because that will just do that at the moment. So I'm going to pull this dowel out and we'll see what happens. There we are. 
just a black plastic slug. Put that over there. There we go. Now that slides out. So that's purely by somebody trying to remove it by poking those dowels through, locked them into there. And uh, yeah, you can punch them through and try and fish them out through here, but the whole thing should just slide off. just held in place by a little barb here that ends up going through a hole in the top of the bumper member. And that is the front removed from our T4. While I've got the opportunity, I've taken the radiator grill off of the van um, because I can give things a good clean up. The two grills, upper and lower grill, are actually one piece and can be unhooked from the metal and if you want to know how to take this off at the ends of the metal panel are two little horseshoes and they hook onto some basically like rivet heads either end and there are three screws across the top and a couple of screws in the lower grill and that's it you take them off and the whole thing just comes on out because the T4 isn't fabulous for access down the front of the engine, it has a trick with its radiator, which is if you undo these two bolts at the top here on what you would call the slam plate, this one, Then this slam plate is only attached to the top of the radiator by these two rubber um, barbs, I guess you'd call it. You can leave it on there, you don't have to remove it. Just disconnect your speedo drive from the clip, if like mine, it's properly clipped to the back of this. And then if you pick up the radiator by the fans, pull up. There we go then the radiator pops out on his two great little lazy arms to allow you much better access to the front of the engine. Cute system, like it a lot. That gives you pretty decent access where you can't normally get. All the hoses are long enough and flexible enough. They're made for this purpose. There's a little arms on the side here, but bring it out and allow the whole thing to rest on that bumper rail. You can do it with the um, plastic bumper on. You just have to put a couple of rags on top of the um, plastic bumper because otherwise the bottom of your rad will sit on it and mark it. So in terms of refitting this bracket, this is the one that was uh, troublesome, let's say, on mine. And a couple of the flanges got uh, broken. But with the pegs still in place, it can still be snapped in. And as we looked at, it's only using these two edges to um, hold the bumper in position vertically. So um, very unlikely to have any problems. It's intended to break away in case of an accident so it doesn't destroy the bodywork. But it's a little uh, slacker than you'd like now. What you can do if you want is put a bolt through there 
uh, with a little spacer, washer, whatever you want to call it, just to touch those two. Just make sure it doesn't project above this surface because that's when you're back into the same problem we had getting it off. And that was caused by these dowels being pushed through too far, um, which causes the whole problem of getting the bumper off and then having to knock it about and then breaking the clips, etc. etc. more than far enough just until the cone is showing this one going back it's going to be nice and flush and that should be then easy for us to get our bumper on and off So let's reassemble our grill. So this has been cleaned and polished. The grill has also had a coat of the grain finish Protex. And just gonna maneuver it into position. Okay, most of the clips have popped back in. Just gonna turn it over. Have a little look. Back over again. <coughs> We're gonna leave the badge till last just because it's um, quite useful to be able to put your hand through there to move it around and maneuver it. And our next mission is to get the radiator back into the standard position. Up and over. And in she goes. Don't forget to reclip on your um, speedo and these little rubber blocks go for these rectangles so drop that over like that and give them a wriggle and they should come through And we've got our two 13 mil bolts, which I think we might upgrade. Yep, and we've upgraded to two cap heads in stainless steel, because I have them, so why not? with stainless steel washers. Much better. And now I should bring over the grill. So we're gonna get the grill in. This side wants to go in first. It's the left-hand side as I'm looking at the front of the vehicle because of this flare. That goes in first, and those horseshoes go around the rivet heads. Get these in a lot of 
place. A bit of fight, fighter jet action. Um, just manoeuvre them until they're in right sort of position. Then good firm nudge and they go home. Three washers and through plastic and holding it to a plastic item. So you're genuinely just stopping things twitching and rattling. And it's easy to forget that there are two more screws because you have to sort of kneel down to see them in the lower grill, just at the ends here. And again, they're just steadying things. So the only two fixings remaining are two 13 mil bolts that hold the bumper to the crash member. I don't even recognize it. <laughs> right. So let's just get him vaguely in the right place. So we can prop up on there. That should stay. Don't let it slide back off the front, but you've got to pull it back to go over those slides. That started on one. Beautiful, slid nicely into position. Do check, be putting these on right. Now it's got a hooked over the top, but the bottom had missed the bracket. There we go, that's how it should work, just clip in. So, time for the badge. These are good, they just snap in. Fortunately, they're quite difficult to snap back out without being on the other side, so. The beastie boys, we've got you. There we go. And let's just drop the bonnet and admire what we've done. Wow, there you gotta agree that's knocked some years off the old girl. Betsy, you've literally had a facelift. Well, there we go. Need to wash the bonnet now. <laughs> so, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, then please subscribe. We're always tinkering around with T4s, T2s, Jaguar XK8, Jeep Cherokee, and just generally playing in the shed and doing experiments. Thanks very much for watching To The Garage. <laughs>